back at uh, the border sessions in The Hague, two days of uh, inspiration, innovation and information. Um, we do two days of interviews uh, over here and my first guest on the second day is Desi Christova. Welcome. Thank um, you. You have a really intriguing title, what you've been t telling uh, uh, the people over here. Why the International Postal Network holds the key to global well-being. Um, well, of course, this is a big topic yeah, we, we, we can talk about, but for, yeah. for starters, what, what, um, what does the Postal Network hold for information? So the, we've heard a lot about digital networks recently and, and that's kind of been at the forefront of innovation, I guess, and, and, and scientific uh, interest, I guess. Um, but uh, what is really fascinating is uh, looking also at this kind of very old network of interactions that's been around, you know, forever, uh, since uh, the early Persian Empire. Yeah. Um, where you know Cyrus the Great was credited with creating this first postal system uh, and everything, and we're still using it today. So it's something that's kind of like past the test of time, and um, it is still fascinating from from a communication perspective. But it also represents a lot of the trade activity and economic activity that's going on, um, especially uh, in terms of e-commerce. So. Uh, companies like Amazon and eBay still largely use this physical layer of um, transmitting packages uh, over the postal network. So it's a fascinating resource of human activity. We uh, let, let them make the noise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's fascinating, if it, like, like you say, for example, uh, people, uh, of course, a postal code, code uh, holds information about uh, the, gen, the, 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 the houses that are expensive, the people that make more or less money. Uh, um, so, so, so what, was that your starting point, seeing in what, does the, uh, uh, what sort of information is in the network, or what sort of traffic is in the network? Yeah, so uh, maybe I should say a bit more about the particular data that I yeah. used. So um, it's data that's being collected by uh, the Universal Postal Union, which is a UN agency. Um, so part of the United Nations and it's been in place since the 19th century and their purpose has kind of been to regulate standardize uh, postal services and to recently uh, since early 2000s collect electronic data records for uh, the interactions that are going on between countries um, so this is uh, my research and their data is on an international level um, so it's kind of very indicative of international development and uh, in this particular study we've used it to look at a uh, country's well-being uh, based on the amount uh, of posts they send and, and the number of postal partners that a country has. Yeah. Um, but how, how is that, that, that changing? Because uh, there was a lot of our, uh, we used to do everything with letters of course mm -hmm. uh, and we don't do that any, yeah. anymore. So how, how, is, how, is it, uh, how is the information that you can uh, get out of uh, a system like this changing? Well, um, the first important thing to say is that it's growing uh, a lot. And um, I guess that was one of the first surprising insights that I saw when I worked with this data. Um, is actually, you know, uh, my personal intuition was like, oh, is this still, you know, people are people still using it? Is it dying off? What's happening? Um, but the first kind of result that I got was looking at the timeline of volume uh, of posts going between countries on an international level. It's just going skyrocketing. Um, and, and now in 2016, there's just like millions and millions of uh, items being transported, whereas, uh, you know, it was uh, exponentially less in uh, 2010. So um, we definitely see a huge growth and that's uh, a lot to do with e-commerce. So it's a lot to do with economic activity. And that's why um, one of the reasons why we found that it's a very good indicator of a country's well-being um, economically and, and also in other aspects. Yeah, because I was thinking about it, uh, like you say, for example, my, uh, uh, my daughter, she doesn't go to the shop to buy plectrums to play guitar, but she order, or, orders it, for, exactly. for example. So there's yeah. a lot. Uh, on, on one hand, we, don't, we use it less to send uh, letters and information. And on the other hand, we use 
use it more for all the e-commerce. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. definitely. And um, it's also really nice to see that, uh, you know, things like, um, you know, around Christmas time, people are seem to be sending each other presents uh, or seem to be ordering a lot more from, from yeah. the Internet. So definitely online shopping is, is a huge part of it. Yeah. You said we uh, worked with the United Nations uh, mm -hmm. a, a data set. So what are the United Nations doing with your uh, with, with your results? Um, so, with the re so it initially uh, the data was connect uh, collected to study kind of logistics and the distribution system to try to optimize um, um, the postal service in general. And my PhD is about uh, complex networks. So uh, when I started my internship there, I, I uh, proposed that we try to use these kind of network um, metrics and network measures to actually. Um, uh, look at the postal data in a different perspective and one of the goals was um, so um, every 15 years the UN sets uh, set of very ambitious goals that um, you know for the next 15 years so in uh, 2000 they had uh, the Millennium Development Goals uh, now in 2015 just in September uh, last year they were discussing the Sustainable Development Goals which uh, focus a lot on climate change uh, but these goals are super um, interesting and very ambitious so things like eradicating poverty uh, you know um, health and education for all um, so what we need is a very reliable measure, uh, a measure that covers, you know, that is universal, so mm -hmm. it covers all countries. Um, so many data sources would not uh, qualify in this way. Uh, something that's cheap, um, and po the postal activity is already being measured, so in that way it's cheap. And um, something that is sustainable over time, and as I mentioned, postal systems have been around forever, so that's kind of a, a good indicator that um, it yeah. would be sustainable. So. Um, very good candidates uh, for a data source for, for measuring these types of goals. Um, and um, basically we're hoping that, uh, so now it's being discussed uh, what exactly to use as, as a benchmark for, for the Sustainable Development Goals and we're hoping that these kind of network measures are going to make their way into uh, the kind of uh, measurements that we're going to be looking at the next 15 years. Yeah, <coughs> you said, uh, of course, th th this is a network you studied and we live, we've always done, but we, li uh, we, we seem to, uh, we, we live in a world of networks and, and there are a lot of them. Yeah. Um, so, so if, if I ask you sort of a, a broader question, so what are the, um, um, what are the common things the various networks uh, have and where do they vary? What, where where, where are, what are they different? Can you give me examples? Of course, yeah. it's a broad question, I understand. Yeah, so um, actually uh, for, this, uh, for this study and for my work uh, at, uh, while I was at the UN, we wanted to compare the postal network, uh, so exactly related to your question, to other types of networks that uh, can be studied. So we looked at other similar networks, so networks of physical flows, like the trade network, like the flights network. Um, and they're also very good candidates for these kinds of studies. But the activity that they reflect is very dedicated. So the trade network reflects trade and the migration network reflects migration. Mm -hmm. So um, the postal network re reflects a kind of wide array of human activity that is not um, covered by any other data source. And, can, can, and it can be about all those things, right? It can be, bi can be business, can be personal. Can exactly, be, uh, yeah. yeah. And I think that's one of the things that is really valuable uh, in, in this data in particular. But um, of course, we also looked at digital networks, so digital flows of information, which are extremely relevant in today's world. Um, and it's, uh, they would be the perfect candidate for a sort of real-time measure because it's something you can monitor yeah. cheaply, uh, literally in real time. Um, but the problem with those types of networks is that there exists a digital divide between countries um, and also between cultures. So uh, in some cultures, they use different types of media than uh, in others. Uh, sometimes email is prevalent, sometimes Facebook, um, like mm -hmm. in most of the Western world. Uh, but it differs from country to country, and in many countries there's not the still the, the kind of uh, strong internet infrastructure uh, in parts of Africa where we can actually make use of this kind of data. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of like network properties, uh, 
networks are very powerful uh, representations of uh, various types of activity yeah. because they, they actually uh, can tell you a lot about the position and structure of organization in, in, in a system, um, like the post or like um, trade. But um, it's important also to think about what these data sources are reflecting and to what extent do they cover, um, and especially when, when you want to do something like measure global well-being, it has to be something that meets uh, the requirements of the whole world, basically. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's really interesting, isn't it? Of course, that's why, you, why, why, why you st started off with, but that's something that's so old, uh, it, it can be s still so valuable for us. To, everything seems to change, but this is like the, uh, uh, well, uh, you, you get more uh, data, of course, uh, now, I think, uh, than you could ever have, because, of course, everything that the, uh, is this, the, the uh, is, is digitizing around uh, the, the the postal uh, activities. Yes. So you, you you as a researcher, you have got a lot more information now than you would have had uh, maybe 20 years ago. Yes. Uh, but but the network uh, is still in in place. Yeah, the network has always been in place, but now luckily we can actually use it to do research and we can measure it in in a, in a dynamic way. Yeah. So not just in a static way. Yeah. So you said this is what you did for your um, uh, internships, what do you do now? So I'm a PhD student in my final year um, and uh, I, so my research is around complex networks but in particular uh, multi-layer networks. So um, looking at the same entity, so in, in this particular project it was countries but from many different interaction perspectives. So um, what uh, we actually uh, ended up with from this project is a composite measure uh, of the global connectivity between countries mm -hmm. uh, on not just the postal network but across different interaction networks. Um, so that's kind of uh, the goal of my PhD is to show how we can use information on many layers to uh, basically gain novel insights about things that we cannot observe on the single layer. So we cannot observe from a single type of interaction. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you um, so much. Yeah, thank you for uh, watching. We will be doing interviews uh, here all day. So. Um, uh, see uh, on our Twitter uh, uh, ac account at this TV what uh, we will be doing and who will be uh, our next guest every hour uh, there will be someone uh, sitting over here and next to me uh, you can watch all the videos all the interviews we've done uh, on our YouTube channel and like I said we will be live here all day thank you